five position brewmasters, but yeah, you really and do position want four that tinies. Six. That's a thing as yeah. well, kind of. So we'll see what they end up. The only thing that's for certain is uh, the gyrocopter wisp, the safe lane gyro. Everything else could be pretty much in the air yeah. with Tiny Rubik and Brewmaster. For EG, it, could it be Mid Magnus too? Five seconds remaining. Yeah, it, cer you know, it certainly could be. Much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know how they like running the Magnus, but no, okay. No, yeah, there, there you go. Just a Kunkka picked up. Still, they have a little bit of a question in terms of who's going to be playing what, and it is going to be Crit on the Magnus. So, despite S4 being on the on the team, they are going to be having the. Support Mag, Centaur is the core. Uh, the Support Magnus is going to slow down their lineup a little bit, but their lanes are quite good, and they have really good catch with the Kunkka pickup now, so I don't think they're too worried. Um, EG's drafts, the, the drafts that we've seen from them so far today have been, I would say, relatively similar style-wise. Lots of uh, early options and wanting to fight early. This game might have... Uh, this. Uh, Draft maybe has a little bit more staying power than some of the previous ones. I feel like if this goes late, they're not necessarily going to be too concerned. The PA scales really well, the Kanka scales well, and even the Centaur into the later stages of the game uh, puts in a lot of work. So I don't think they're too worried if this one starts to drag on a little bit, which is nice potentially because Fnatic have also been playing uh, a little bit greedier in terms of their drafts. It is going to be the Abed Tiny, so let's see what he can get done. Lots of rotation potential from both mid laners. Kanka can move around and find kills, Tiny can do the same, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how this one plays out. I think this time around too, Fnatic are playing a little bit of a faster lineup. Um, where in yeah. the last lineup, we saw them needing a couple of items before they were really able to do anything, but here... Um, it looks a lot different in my eyes where we could see Tiny get a blink dagger, start moving around, you have some good lockdown, maybe get the Brewmaster a quicker six, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, Fnatic might be the ones who are playing the death ball quick, uh, yeah. quick pace lineup. Yeah, for sure. The, the interesting thing for me is going to be how these team fights play out because I feel like both teams. Like they, both teams have quite good team fight, and there's a lot of really high impact abilities uh, that are going to be flowing around. But there's also a lot of like potential big AOE combinations that we could see. So the initiation is going to be really important. Uh, who gets gone on, where on the map, everybody's fighting, if they're managing to fight around their vision. Because there's lots of abilities where if they're used in just the right way, um, then they can have a, a super big impact. So it should be a, a flashy game, at the very least always down for flashy games we take a look at where these lanes are starting to set up as it will be the gyro as well as the wisp over bottom for now do you think there's anything uh, that's going to come from maybe a lane shift at all from either team or are these the matchups are pretty standard uh I, I like the idea of putting pressure the way that eg are now swapping it up to have the centaur uh, just solo safe the battle begins. because i i do think they want there's no way that they're going to let them get away with this rubik wisp support duo it's like the magnus is not a great support necessarily but there's really no way that they should let uh fanatic just sit back and farm with their two supports and also earlier i said that i thought that the you know that dj was going to be on rubik but of course dj is the the wisp player so jabs on rubik yes yeah, so i do really like fanatic's lineup one of the things though that i like from the eg lineup is the potential with the empower to get rtz a little bit of form that will most likely mean they'll skip the battle fury and then um, Fly, who's going to be putting on that Frost Shield, of course, to someone like Arteezy, who can use the Phantom Strike to go in, have that Frost Shield on top of him, and maybe uh, get some earlier aggression out of a PA. Interesting the way that Fnatic is playing this bottom lane. I uh, got the Flak immediately from MP. He just pops it and shoves out the wave. I think they want the, the creeps kind of constantly pressuring with them. They want the creeps on their side. They don't want any opportunity for EG start chasing EG actually just coming over and body blocking both of the camps always really important when you're playing a tri lane versus tri lane you have to deny access to the pull because if Fnatic are allowed to pull then they're going to get an incremental advantage and they might get level three a little bit faster than you and that's where this lane is going to get uh kind of dangerous on both sides because gyrocopter is going to pick up some more damage there'll be the two points in the fade vault 
So anything that EG can do to lock down those poles is super important. Fanatic, I noticed that DJ keeps tethering over, breaking out some of these trees, at least in the lane, but like you said, EG, and we're trying to make sure that they can uh, get a better creepy equilibrium for themselves. But the telekinesis comes out with the rocket barrage from MP. Frost shield immediately placed on a crit. He takes a lot of damage and only has five charges in a stick to heal up. Well, cutting down all these trees is really nice for Fnatic because it, it gives them a pull that's harder to contest. Like, you sometimes see people pull around this way, but being able to just kind of go directly down to the creep wave makes it so much harder for EG to mess with. So they know exactly what they're doing here. Uh, but top lane's going quite well for S4, out farming uh, Ice 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 just a little bit on the Brewmaster. But I think this is going to be a pretty boring matchup, not a whole lot really happening there. And mid lane going quite well for Ab. I think he just tried for a toss back on Samel, but didn't quite get it, unfortunately. Didn't have the avalanche yeah. mana. Oh, I guess he had a, a mango if he'd gotten it. And Abed is ahead right now of Sumail, who will throw the turn, but it's not going to land onto the Tiny, who's got this early bottle. So he does have avalanche available to himself if he wants to go for the avalanche as well as the toss once again. He's actually short the mana, but... Right now, uh, about a full level ahead of this Kunkka, doing a really good job here over mid. He is really going to need a bottle refill. Samael actually played it really nicely. Oh, Abe can take some more damage here. I don't think he's going to die, but... Um, Abe was trying to bottle during that last fight, but Samael just kept canceling every sip the instant that he used it. Like, he only got half a second out of each one. Nice so done. So nothing too crazy happening with this game so far. Three and a half minutes in, no first blood, but the Avalanche threw on a Sumail again. No follow-up in that toss. He doesn't have the mango if he wanted to toss back, but he doesn't have anything to toss back to, so. Cost him his mango to tower. get the mana to toss and cancel the south, but looks like lots yeah. of regen getting ferried here. Uh, this next turn is going to be super important for Abed. Whether or not he gets this will decide a lot of this lane. If he gets a regen in our, or an arcane or something, that's pretty nasty for Smell. Oh, that's an arcane, but it's at the bottom. Yes. This will do just fine. I have the shockwave as well as the skewer. They actually don't go to the empower just yet. Level 2. Skipping the empower, is this what you're looking for for Arteezy? Just wait, wait on uh, giving him the empower for now? Yeah, I think there's no point in having it for the lane, really. I mean, he'll probably start picking up points around level 4, level 5, but early on they just want all the nukes that they can get. And being able to, like, use the skewer for the slow or to even break a tether or something could be really nice. I think this is pretty good. For in between the towers at the moment, this top lane Ice and Sash is kind of getting hounded, but they are both finding pretty similar CS. Bouncer runes coming up. Fnatic going to make an attempt or make a bid for both of them down here at bottom. I'll keep TJ close to that bounty rune. He finally picks it up. He bottles it and should be able to pick up the other one towards Radiant bottom. And meanwhile, Ice Ice Ice, he gets Radiant a third, so it's three for one. Ooh, toss back with the TP in from Jabs. Might be able to get the kill. Sumail in trouble. The telekinesis came out with the tower and the tree tossed into his face. Sumail, he is the victim of first blood. And Abed's the one who gets it with a rotation over from the Rubik. That was so nice. When Just really good coordination from uh, Fnatic. Crit almost getting taken out if he skewers back. They look to go in on MP for a moment, but he's got the tether. He should be really just quite safe. Crit did have... 10 stick charges up his sleeve, so wasn't really in too much danger. But they just want to punish because they know that the Rubik goes away from the lane. They shouldn't let the gyrocopter sit and farm comfortably if it's a 2v3 situation. But so far, Fnatic looking pretty good. Bottom lane, I think, has so gone better than uh, I had expected for them. For Rubik, what's the scariest thing he can steal? I think in my eyes, obviously RP is going to be one of the big ones, but I almost think Frost Shield's very yeah. big, where you can yeah, have any, that Frost Shield on MP to just run on in. Yeah, any of uh, any of Lich's abilities I think are going to be really good. 
Um, even the, the hoof stomp's pretty sweet. Good. Bottom. The missile comes out. They've got the rocket barrage as well as the fade bolt coming in. They'll get the kill. The jabs getting the kill on a crit and two nothing early here for Fnatic. Again, looking really good. Samael back under the tower once again. Ooh, the courier almost dies to the to the tree hit there, but just barely surviving. Abed is playing up in Sumel's face super hard. He's actually a little bit behind on the CS now, but uh, just putting on constant aggression, really threatening all the time. Sumail was behind by battle level, but there it is once again. He'll get the toss. It's going to be back towards Jabs, who will throw the boat. That lands onto the time. The shockwave coming in, but it's not going to land. DJ comes over just in case. But well, nothing will be had by either side, and Sumail will use this time to fill up his bottle, go back to base, cool. heal up as much as he can, and look at Ice back. Ice, but though. that, yeah, that's going to be in the hands of Ice 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 if he plays this to try and go in. Does have the primal split available? Fly nearby. Thunderclap to start. Torrent coming in, but he's stunned up, and here comes Abed, DJ, as well as the Rubik. Frost Shield doing as much as it can, but Sumail getting chased up pretty hard. The Stampede comes out. It's not going to matter, but that's over bottom where they look for MP. They've got the hoof stomp. The Telekinesis through. Not enough to save. The Gyro PA gets out of harm's way. There's the Skewer pushing Jabs away from his tower, so making him much more vulnerable. And the Rubik has to be careful as the Shockwave back in the hands of S4 and the Tether won't matter. As DJ did pop a salve trying to help out this Rubik, but unfortunately won't be able to do so. Man, with Retaliate and Empower, the S4 is hitting really hard. Kind of interesting, nobody's top at all. Both offlaners rotating out to go and make plays happen, but... Uh, I would even say that maybe S4 a little bit more successful. Looks like they are gonna... Well, they almost get this bottom tower. I guess MP and DJ coming back down here are gonna drive them back. So both teams successfully holding onto the tier 1s after the, the offlane rotations, but... Pretty interesting little mirror there. Neither one of them choosing to stay in the lane and trying to pressure the tier 1. Isis Ice is back up there now, but uh, they both had the spells that they wanted to go and use. Abed's already on the prowl. Yeah, he's looking over bottom. They did get a scan. He'll grab the tree, but I believe he's been spotted, so S4 back behind his own tower. They've got a couple of heroes here just in case. Abed does make a move in a little bit too aggressively, but... Oh, Teasy down the stairs and away he's, he's gone. But they find this stack, and I think they need to... Uh, can they contest that? I, they've got the gyro, so they could definitely try and take it. I think they can leave it for a little bit. I don't think EG are going to be able to clear it anytime soon. So they can just wait for it. Crit, it's secure. All the way across the river, attempting to TP out if they could get the telekinesis. Oh. Able to TP away. This doesn't really pay off for Fnatic. They're pressuring the tier 1 tower. They've got Apid, MP, as well as DJ down here. Maybe they can get a kill. It's finally all worked. The Avalanche comes in as well as the call down. Toss back to MP, but they've got the Stampede. So S4, he's fine. He's got the Fraud Field on top of him. Finally gets stunned up. The tier 1 tower not taking nearly any damage. I looking for a moment to possibly pop in. As Apid takes the Bounty Rune and will also pick up a regen. This centaur is huge. I mean, he's got 1800 HP. He's already got his Vanguard, so going on him was a little bit optimistic. And that was a lot of wasted time for the Tiny. Uh, he is still ahead of the Kunkka in terms of farm, but I think he was really hoping to find something a little bit quicker and enable a push. Just kind of farming. Uh, top tier 1 has taken some pretty big damage. Ice 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 up here with his Vlads, but Arteezy just can't quite seem to find a, find a home. Oh, I guess they, they maybe they can clear this with the with the blur. Yeah, it looks like they'll be okay. It's gonna take them a little while, but still. They gotta get rid of this right now before Fnatic have the opportunity to contest it. And they come over, and that's gonna bring the attention of all of EG who are making the rotation in. MP comes on over, but most of the stack's already been taken. They've got the X as well as the boat. That'll come through onto this Wisp. And let's see where their follow-up is. The Avalanche comes up from Op-Ed. It's not gonna be enough damage. Just said the RP hits on the two. RTZ in a little bit of trouble. There is the Sinister Gaze that's going to lock in Ice Ice Ice, but they get the kill on RTZ. Now they're looking for more with the Primal Split being used by the Brewmaster. The Cyclone holds up Sumail. They'll kill Fly. That's two dead on EG as they continue to surround Sumail. Kunkka's got nowhere to go. The Avalanche in three kills for Fnatic.
and they lose nothing. It was a high ground <laughs> aggression that came out from Fnatic. That is always the scariest, especially by this shrine, but it worked out in leaps and bounds for them. Uh, EG knew that the stack had been scouted, but they they didn't manage to D ward everywhere, right? They've got these two sentries down, but Fnatic just placed the wards further back. And I really like what Fnatic did. They planted two wards at the same time when they came up onto that high ground. Just uh, knowing that if one of them got dewarded, they would still have the vision that they need. So crits in full, homing missile hits, and the rocket barrage on top. MP with another kill, but the X coming through once again on DJ is going to be enough once more. X boat torrent all landing, but the tether over, and he's still fine looking for the relocate, but into the feet, into the hoofs of X4, and he ends up dying anyway. But off screen fly, he dies to a neutral creep. I almost feel bad. Fly getting ganked. Bottom tower but uh, that was that was pretty nice by DJ. He forced S4 to use some more spells on him. So nice uh, toss. Able to get Fable anyway. coming out. Tokenis is on top of that, but it's not leading to a kill on this Phantom Assassin just yet. They're really doing a good job of uh, pressuring RTZ constantly. It's really making him not feel safe at all in this jungle. All, all RTZ wants to do right now is just keep hitting jungle creeps, farm ancients with the blur. Uh, but they've put wards everywhere that he wants to be farming, and it seems like Fnatic are just going to keep on running at him. I think that's what Abed's job in this game is. He's just going to be running at the PA constantly. He just gets run down. The damage from MP as well as the homie missile where you're able to go in. You know you have safety with DJ by your side. Homie missile into the rocket barrage. It's a lot of damage coming through from the gyrocopter so far, and a 2,000 net worth, 3,000 net worth lead for Fnatic doing everything right in this early game. Yeah, this is looking really, really good for them. So Mel just going to be rushing a BKB here. They, I think they want to try and take some fights with uh, with the boat. Kanka is quite strong at this point of the game, but uh, the Brewmaster is also really, really potent, so... Gotta be careful. Okay, on cooldown, but they've got the smoke. They look over at Sumail. Homie missile coming in. They'll bring Jebs all the way to the outside of this. They almost want to see Sumail use X on somebody so they can't catch up, but the homie missile comes in. They've got the primal split on top of it. There's the rock barrage, and Sumail in a lot of trouble, but he gets the stampede off. There's the toss. It's only on a creep, so it's not in a hero that can really hold him in, but the tree toss comes in as well as the stun. That's from the bear of Ice 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 to make sure they get the kill on a Sumail. Trying to skewer away, but the Tokinesis is out from the Rubik. They've got the toss on top of it. And there's Jabs finishing him off with the Fade Bolt, 10 to 3 in favor of Fnatic. And just putting a lot of pressure on EG early. EG need this Blink Dagger on Centaur so badly. They're just getting run over. The, the PA is not in a position to be able to join fights just yet. She'll be strong against the Gyrocopter later on, but for now with all of this, uh, all this magical burst that Fnatic is packing, there's just no way for RTZ to... Uh, to come and get involved. And it's not his job really at this point either to be taking the fights. The the plan for the lineup really is supposed to be that the other four heroes can, you know, are enough. Rest for again, but focusing his shots on DJ. And yeah, DJ just gets killed off. You've got three heroes here, possibly looking to go in on the MP. No waste. Call down comes out. Crit nearby. He's got RP at the ready. And now he's going to be spotted. We'll see if EG are going to re-engage. Abed's looking for Artizu. He doesn't want the Magnus. He wants a bigger kill. Going around the back. Jabs shows himself. Artizu throwing the Stifling Dagger out as S4 comes over. Blink hooks up. And they might have spotted the Tiny, but now the Blink with the Avalanche and the Talks coming in. The Fable is going to finish off Artizu. Now they look over at S4. The Skewer. Telekinesis. Chain Frost coming in from Fly. The Hyper Real Kick coming out from the Oh, And now Crit trying to run away, but with the Chain Frost bouncing, it's a little bit difficult for Fnatic, but not too bad. Is now they've got the Tether on an MP. MP very much unkillable at this point. They clean up Crit. Down goes S4. Four heroes dead. Sumail's the only one alive, but the only reason he is alive is because he's nowhere near involved. That was a really weird spot for EG to to pick a fight. Like they, they got a they got a freebie on the wisp with uh, MP and DJ just running around the corner into him, but I don't really know why they stuck around the way that they did. I think they could have just disengaged, but they gave Fnatic the time to come back in with like Abed just walked all the way to top and at once he got there I just think EG needed to it needed to get out
They didn't have the Kunkka anywhere nearby. I feel like EG haven't taken an actual... Other than the fight for the Ancients, where they were already taking some damage and stuff like that, they haven't taken a true 5-on-5, five five, really. And to their detriment, I feel like Fnatic are just Dark winning these just through sheer strength of numbers right now. Uh, so EG gotta just take a second. They do have the blink on the Centaur now, uh, but gotta try and get an actual 5-on-5 five five going. Or maybe just wait for the BKBs. Maybe that's what they have to do. And despite being down about 10 kills, or not about 10 kills, um, you know, it's not that bad. 3,000 net worth is definitely negligible. You, you can make this work if you drag the game on. So I, I don't think EG have to be, you know, frazzled or anything. I think they can still kind of play this game. They need to stop dying, of course, but I think slowing down the pace of the game, looking for farm on both the Phantom Assassin as well as the Kunkka could be... Uh, the key and stop getting yeah, or at least try stop going too far out Yeah, the gyrocopter is getting a huge amount of acceleration just from all of these kills like he's only got a hundred CS But he's four one and seven. So just all of the kill participation has really Boosted his farm this game and once he gets his BKB that's gonna be a pretty big timing. So if EG can Yeah, just stop the stop the bleeding for a little bit. That would be a big help Ice, Ice, Ice is super tanky. 200 health talent, and he's picked up a Vanguard. He is going to be so difficult to bring down. And, it, I mean, with good reason, he needs to be the frontliner. He needs to be the one scouting and setting things up. Makes sense that he's going for this kind of build. Boink Hoof Stomp comes out on onto this uh, Ice, Ice Brew, but, you know, yeah. doesn't do anything. <laughs> he's got Just... 19 HP regen, doesn't care. <laughs> As the Vlad's back to full health, regen is fine. And Fnatic with the small lead they have, should they be pushing their advantage a little bit heavier? Or uh, are they okay to sit back and farm as well? I think they're okay to just wait for a round of items. They're only going to chill out for another minute and a half or so. Like, as soon as the Gyro gets BKB, the Wisp gets Mech. They're so close to so many big awesome. items that it just doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, actually go at this exact second but yeah give them another minute and i think we'll see fanatic back and running it eg ice 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 is definitely itching to use another primal split he knows that he's super strong yeah here we go so they're gonna, gonna force things a little bit by heading into the rashan pit the dkb is getting delivered and the mech s4 got the x on him Well, it's Doesn't good to know that uh, X marks the spot beats Toss, because otherwise uh, that could have been a very tricky situation for him. I was a little nervous on that one, if he was going to get pulled back and yeah. land. I, mean, I know that if you buy back mid-Toss, you can reappear where you were, so... Uh, here's the X as well as the Boba. The Primal is going to be used by Isis. Isis. They've also got the homing missile coming in, so the stun's going to be thrown out by Isis, Isis to start this one, and then the homing missile on top of that. MP comes over the blink. Tom comes out from Escort as well as the Stamps on top of that. BKB is going to be popped by Sumail. The Torrent hit onto the Gyrocopter, and now they're trying to relocate out with the call down coming in. And they just get away with the telekinesis through on Artiz, who has to back off in this fight. He's already low. DJ in a lot of trouble getting blown up. He's the first one to die. The Chain Frost bouncing around. Jabs gets hit. The Sinister Gaze is going to come out with the RP from Crate on a two. That's going to be on Isis as, as well as Jabs. Artiz looking for another opening here. They lost S4. He buys back immediately. Blink hooks up onto the Rubik, and now they might be able to get themselves a secondary kill. They finally find themselves Rubik. The boat comes out once again from Sumail. is hit by this avalanche, but it's not going to land on anybody as he was hit by the avalanche, and the X doesn't get pulled back in time. MP full health as well as Op-Ed. EG need to find their spots carefully, and unfortunately for them, they're unable to clean up Fnatic enough where they might feel com comfortable going for this Roche. Could have been a much better fight for EG, but unfortunately, I think the Fnatic sent a little wraparound with the uh, the Tiny and the Rubik. They were hunting for Arteezy, and they actually managed to find him, uh, knock him down to about a third HP, and force the BKB out of him, uh, which made his fight way harder, because when he finally got over to the Gyrocopter, he'd already pretty much used his entire BKB duration, uh, and couldn't quite commit in the way that he wanted. Like, he was just chilling in the, that patch of trees, throwing out daggers the entire time because he knew that if he came out of there uh, the tiny was just going to finish him off. So. 
a bit of a messy one, but I feel like overall it actually works. That would went pretty well for Fnatic, especially uh, forcing a buyback out of S4. Yeah, Fnatic's doing a really good job, and uh, back to the Roche, they, uh, Roche pit they go. They uh, can keep up the aggression, especially if they got this Aegis. But here come EG again. Blink hooks up. That's going to land on two as well as the charge. But the Blink, nice toss. That's bringing Sumail back, who no longer has the X to spot. The Codon's going to come out on a couple of these heroes. They've got the boat falling in from Sumail about the BKB. MP chasing for a moment, but they go back into the Roche Pit. They don't want to lose focus. Go for the Just get themselves a second life here on the MP and then move in. They get the second life. The Torn's going to land on the Rubik. They continue to move forward with the Avalanche and then the toss pulling Sumail back. Who's no longer got this BKB. Focus down and in a lot of trouble as the boat from Jabs is the one that hits. And now they look over at Fly. And they've got him in the Cyclone. They'll get the stun. They'll get the kill. Two heroes dead on EG. Fnatic. I go back into the Roche more. He still oh. has the Storm Panda. Oh, S4. Doesn't get Cyclone. That was really close. He was he was like mid animation on that uh, whirlwind before it before it despawned, but still Fnatic. Two quick kills, such a nice toss back from the tiny, like the X marks the spot already being used, but Sumail just getting a little bit too close and then forced into popping a very, very awkward BKB. Fnatic, the execution on these team fights has actually just been so good. They, it looks like they're just thinking one step ahead about everything, right? They go for the Roshan, but they only leave the Brewmaster and the Gyrocopter in there and they send the tiny off looking for a gank or EG, they, they pulled the little X marks the spot shenanigans once, the second time around, Fnatic are ready, and they have a plan to, to deal with it. They're playing some very smart Dota. But really yeah, they cool adapted to, to that X situation pretty quickly. Yeah, And they caught really Sumail fast. out after the BKB. So, 5,000 net worth lead, and Fnatic looking really good. What are the next steps for them to just finish the game? Because they are definitely... Uh, the only tier 2 standing right now is this bottom lane. And I feel like they're almost just on the cusp of really pulling away in this game. Uh, they really want to get some more wards down. They don't have the vision that they want. It's by fly. Didn't even didn't even come out of the toss before being dead. Uh, but they, yeah, they really want to establish a perimeter around the EG base and just keep them trapped in there. Uh, which they don't really have just yet. So that'll be the next step. Take this tier 2, set up some wards. Um, and hopefully this, I think they are hoping that this Aegis is going to nab them at least a tier 3, maybe a lane of Rax. Uh, I think they're quite happy to just continue fighting, because each you have to keep using these BKB charges for every single fight. And the BKB charges aren't winning them the fights, is the problem. Like, that's what is supposed to be happening with EG's lineup at this point, but they're just getting forced to expend resources in really weird ways that they don't want to. Like, all of the BKB usages that they've had so far this game have been forced BKBs instead of, like, BKBs where they get to use them in the way that they want right as they go into the fight. So here it is, the push to the Tier 2, taking the last outer tower. Fnatic, they're on it. They still have the stages for a couple more minutes. I wouldn't be surprised to just see them continue the aggression. There's no reason not to. Yeah. 100%. They, they, right now, they have not been given a reason on why not to fight. They've been winning these fights. They took the Roche. Uh, things happening. Oh, boy. Oh, they wasted spells. This is such a good opportunity for Fnatic if they can catch something. Yeah, I, I, I see. He doesn't have Blink Dagger, so he's a uh, far distance away. The Phantom Strike from RTZ to crit, so he's able to make some distance between him and the side of Fnatic, but... Yeah, using that illusion gets the boat drawn, and now this is another reason where Fnatic can just shoot themselves and be aggressive. But then, they do just want to seed for a little bit. I mean, the boat's not a huge cooldown. It's going to be back up in 20 seconds time, but... X marked the spot. That'll be up to the MP. Still, is this it? He's still pulling back with the skewer. That's a nice place to put him and take up that Aegis to start. So that's going to drop an attic deep into this, into this dire base. So we'll see what they're able to do afterwards. They land a turn as he comes up the second time. Artizi moving with a BKB. Tron right MP down. But 
be one of those pandas looking for more than the sun. And I think I said, dealt with. That looks very nice for me. She, and now they see because they don't want to allow Fnatic to exit here. They've got the X that's going to land in that MP. But the damage on RT is not too great. The amount of trouble the boat comes in. They lose RT to the RP on the two. EG have a huge opportunity to make something happen as the core goes in with the double edge as well. The host thought that's going to land on a couple of these heroes. Op-Ed getting involved. The so red score. They've got our no RTZ as the stone RP comes in. Fly dies. S4 is down. And only Fly has buyback at the moment. Mail moving forward and no EJ, but the toss comes to Mail's day. And he's got buyback as well. But without the gyrocopter, the pushing potential isn't exactly amazing from Fnatic at this exchange. So much damage being done by the tiny in that fight. EG, some really nice plays of their own that both skewer back. They got the gyrocopter Aegis down really quickly. Um, I want this tier 3 really badly. and uh, But takes a few more swipes at it, but is going to respect a couple of the respawns coming in. Back himself out. We're seeing the, the, the PA does a lot of damage. RTZ, compared to the last fight, did finish up the Deso and has the minus 3 armor corruption talent. So, as we saw on those uh, Ice 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 Pandas, he is hitting really hard. Um, and until he gets the 1500 HP to Primal Split Units and the AC, they're still going to be pretty vulnerable to that. So, you have to be very careful with the micro. Yes, it's glimpses of hope for EG, but even more glimpses of just aggression successfully paying off for Fnatic and looking really good. Everything had to come together there for EG for Fnatic to even lose the gyrocopter in that. It was a good skewer bring back MP, a gyrocopter back towards the tier 4, really isolating him away from his team. But how many times are you really going to have that opportunity? Yeah, I, a lot of that is that Fnatic. I feel like they force things a little bit. They they saw the spells used and they just wanted to go and take a crack at the high ground. And that that's pretty much the best place for EG to be taking a fight at the moment, right? They got a lot of help from their tier fours. Fnatic couldn't really do anything too clever. And the other thing is that Abed was forced to initiate onto S4 to prevent him from immediately uh, hoof stomping the gyrocopter as he came up out of the Aegis respawn. Uh, and because of that, he didn't really you know, it wasn't an ideal fight for him because he had to deal with the centaur instead of just like instantly killing the lich or instantly going on the PA or something like that. Uh, it made it a little bit more awkward and I feel like Fnatic's still just going to take another shot at it. Now on the high ground is S4. Won't get spotted, he'll be able to blink away. Right, let's take a look. So now he's got BKB, he's going into a Radiance next. That's a nice item on Koka. You're really tanky, you can just exist in the middle of the fight and do some damage passively. Uh, the mischance is going to be annoying for everybody on Fnatic as well. I like this choice. It's going to take him a little while longer to finish it, but once he gets it, it is going to be... Who are they going to send that? Are they just going to try and toss this down? So, there's the X, forcing out the Primal Split from Ice Ice Ice. The Frost Shield will be out onto the tower, as well as the Crimson Guard, trying to do as much as it can to stop them from taking the Tier 3, but at the end of the day, the Tier 3 is gone. The X spot comes out on an MP, but no follow-up for that at the moment. Homie, so we'll hit on to some man. Now let's see how willing Fnatic are to go. Back to Primal Ice Ice, now they got the Dagger. The Blink Post not coming down from S4, but Ice is going to blink very offensively. They've got themselves the Avalanche and the Stone Orb. That's going to be huge here for Fnatic. And the RP back! Coming in and really leading the way here for EG. They lose the Lich, they lose the group. I think really gone for both sides just yet. A buyback here on the Lich. The Avalanche Toss comes out to Sumail, and that's going to be big. But S4 landing the hooks off. There's the Chain Frost bouncing around, doing what it can. But let's see, they've got the follow-up to kill him off. They need a couple more shots, they'll probably kill him. And now, without the Tiny, are you really willing to stay? You'll get them... Get the melee racks, hopefully, and now it's your time to back off. But RTZ in a little bit of blink surrounded by RP as well as DJ. The hook comes through. That's going to end on the ISIS ice, but I think he continues to move on forward. The sun comes out on RTZ, and he's in a lot of trouble. But the buyback comes out from soon. They've got the X, and the stifling dagger. On to MP, pulling him back. There's the torrent, but tethered up. Once again, DJ oh, gets the relocate out. RTZ's now dead to MP. He's not even there. The call down finishes him off. Now the X on the high side side with the boat following it up. But they just don't have the damage and MP and DJ are back. Fnatic couldn't play this more perfectly. All the little plays from Fnatic have been 
so good. I don't really understand why EG went on the Brewmaster. I feel like he was the only available target uh, just because the rest of Fnatic had kind of backed off. And I think oh he no, uh, Sumail oh. pops the BKB. He'll steal the Torrent. Sumail trying to do all he can with the Blink. Host off, or no, it's Blink actually coming from Crit. He's not able to do anything there as S4 continues to move on forward. BKB and Papa and P. Meanwhile, on the back lines, you see for TZ kill off DJ. So you no longer have that wit. Oh, and... BOTs. He's coming. He's here. Re-engage. DJ finally coming over. He had to TV to the shrine and he'll find you know, soon a tether target to get over to. That should help. All right. I think Fnatic took a second and realized, all right, maybe we don't need to just keep throwing ourselves into this. Let's buy a few more items. Let's get another Roshan. Let's kind of close this one out the safe way. Oh man, Sumail, looking at his inventory, it speaks volumes about what happens this game. Like, he thought he had time to go for the Radiance, but then the last couple of minutes have just been so good for Fnatic. He kind of desperation bought this Sanj, trying to get a Heaven's Halberd, uh, or something along those lines, but... EG really feel like they're on the brink. Nice, oh, Blink Telekinesis, and a lot of trouble is the torrent that was stolen a little bit of a while ago. Nice P, but where's your follow-up? You no longer have to now. The Chief Park's gonna be passing around. S4 comes in with a hook. That's gonna land on a couple of these heroes. The Stippling Dagger's thrown out, but the stolen RP comes back in. That's gonna lock down S4. He's in so much trouble being right clicked by MP. Meanwhile, Crit goes down, and they're looking for more, because Ophid's inside the base. S4 goes down, and... Oh, we look in. BKB's gonna be popped by RTs. They're looking for enough damage to kill off DJ, but now he realizes he just needs to run. The Phantom Strike over to S4, as he's thrown in the air by Isis Isis Panda, who's finally back to form. Alright, well, I thought that they were need, going to need to get a Roche, but the chain stun on Sumail was so perfect. Couldn't get the BKB off, and now he's just dead for 60 seconds. They got no Kunkka, and they're missing a lot of tools for this fight. Backlines, Avalanche, Toss, S4 going in without really anybody else. He'll get the kill on a DJ, but he ends up paying with it with his life for that kill. And he's dead for 104 seconds. Seems like EG gonna take the... I mean, I think they could tap out here, but uh, they do also have a chance with the PA scaling, and they can certainly hold for a long time with the Empower and all the Cleave and whatnot, so... I don't know, similar to the... Like, letting the Wisp through the draft, this is a little bit of a statement, too. It's like, look, pr prove that you can end the game. Prove that you can not mess up and uh, close this one out properly. Because I feel like at this point, Fnatic really do have this one uh, mostly in the bag. Especially once they get this Aegis over on the, the Gyrocopter. MP just does so much damage, and I don't think they have the resources to kill him twice with all of the other help from Fnatic heroes. We're trying to go for Roche. This is only the second one. EG smoke over. We'll see if if they can win this fight. They certainly have a realistic shot. Possibly a divine rapier into the hands of Arteezy soon too. Yeah, uh, I think that's what they need at this point. That's kind of a uh, the last last disc effort. SSI is gonna go scout with the Storm Panda. Nicely done. Ooh. RTZ. And look at this, the boots of travel from Ovid? No. They thought about it, but why fight with only a quarter of a primal split? What, what's the point? They may as well just wait for the split. And then go from there. Oh, Heaven's Halberd here onto the Centaur, so after that Crimson Guard, he goes into the Heaven's Halberd, and again, still, we'll see, it's <laughs> countdown clock to Divine Rapier, but I don't know if he's even going to get there, RTZ in a little bit of trouble as the e boy comes out, Avalanche talks, which he's able to survive for now, but ends up on MP, now the hook stop's not going to really matter, stunned up his S4, and the Stampede comes out a little bit too late, they've got the Telekinesis, RP on a 3, so maybe the turn, if they've got the damage, it would really work out if they had RTZ, but now the Chain Frost on top of it, three heroes dead, this is a big problem for EG is the real key from DJ Chuck DJ the torrent comes in the e-blade again on a Sumail he gets under his tier four but hey you thought it was cover earlier it's not gonna work out anymore as they just run you down and they eat you up 
Fnatic taking game two and a 2-0 sweep over EG. I think everyone on Fnatic played phenomenally this game, but especially Abed, I want to say. I think his tiny was fantastic. Always on the right targets, found so many opportunities in these fights. He did really well in the lane as well against the Kanka, who has felt like he's not impossible to deal with, 